Now we're going to do a problem that's very, very similar. In fact, the only thing I've changed is that instead of saying equal, it says greater than or equal to. And so uh, the first step is identical to the last one where it said equal to, is find out where it's actually equal. So pretend it's equal. Uh, from the last step, we got when it's equal, b is 1 or negative 4.5. So those are my two answers for when it's equal to. So <clears throat> the next thing I do is I draw this on a number line. So here's negative 4.5, and here's 1. The other things, numbers I'm going to need to write on my number line are any numbers that make the original thing undefined. So in this case, 3 would make this undefined because the bottom would be 0. So I put 3 on my number line. I would also put 0, because if I put 0 in for b, 3 over 0, that's undefined. So I'd put in 0 as well. Now I've divided my number line into five sections. The far left and far right sections, and three in between sections. And the goal is to find out which of these sections makes this inequality true or false. And our answer is always where it's true. That's what our, our goal is, to find where is the inequality true. So I just have to plug in test numbers. I have to test five numbers. So any number in this region over here, like negative 5 or negative 6, in between here, negative 1, negative 2. In here, I'd have to do a decimal, like 1 half or uh, 1 fourth. Um, I could do number 2 here, the number 4 or 5 out there. I'm only going to do 1 for right now, and uh, then I'm just going to let you know. Okay, how so I'm going to plug in 2. So if I plug in 2, that's going right here, that's where 2 is. If I plug in 2, 4 over 2 minus 3 is negative 4, plus 3 over 2, so that's plus 1.5, greater than or equal to 2, that makes negative 4 on top, and negative 1 on bottom, which is positive 4. So now if I add this up, negative 2.5, greater than or equal to Four. Well, that's false. That is not true. Greater uh, negative number is not greater than a positive number. And if I do all the other sections, I will find out uh, that this section is true, this section is false, this section is true, and that section is true. Now, it is pretty common to have an alternating pattern of true and falses, but that does not guarantee that it's always that way. It is totally possible to have two true sections next to each other, two false sections next to each other, or even have every section be true or every section be false. And so you do need to check every single section. Don't just make an assumption. Now I have to interpret this. I have to interpret what it means. So my variable is b, and I have to write an inequality for all the true sections. So I have this section right here. This section says that b is less than negative 4.5. And the question I'm always going to need to ask myself is, can it equal negative 4.5? And if I look here, negative 4.5 was the solution to the problem where it was equal. When it was equal, negative 4.5 was the solution. So if I put it in now, I'll get something that's equal, and that's okay because it's greater than or equal to. So it can equal negative 4.5. For this section, I have b is between 0 and 1. If I look at 0, b cannot equal 0 because that would make it undefined. So I'm not going to put or equal to there. But b can equal 1, because if I plug in 1, that was, again, one of my solutions that made it equal. So that's okay. And then the last section here would say uh, b is greater than 3, and I can't uh, make it equal to 3, because if it's equal to 3, I've undefined. So, uh, again, once uh, to sum it all up, you have... Um, to solve the equation like normal, find out where it's undefined, put all those on a number line, test each section to see whether it's true or false, and then interpret the true sections into an answer of an inequality or a series of inequalities. Mm -hmm.